Welcome to Doing Bart Things. This is Bart. Um, I'm here to kind of just talk about some of the latest tech and hardware news and gaming PCs and PC builds in general. Um, something that I've thought about is making a channel in order to do that very thing and actually build some stuff once in a while um, and kind of see how that goes. Um, I've truly been inspired by a lot of other YouTubers that um, I casually listen to, which is uh, UFD Tech, Gamers Nexus, all those big channels, and uh, decided to kind of start doing my own thing and uh, maybe having an opinion or two. It's a dangerous thing. Um, I'm sure that <laughs> I won't match a lot of other opinions out there, but uh, we'll do our best to just have a good time. Um, so stick around. Um, like and subscribe if you care to, uh, but I'm not going to twist your arm. Anywho, uh, so for today, I was taking a look around the web and noticed these images of the uh, GeForce RTX 4090 Ti. Um, and kind of going through these pictures, pretty interesting actually. So first off, uh, for those that aren't completely familiar, um, you know, friends and family that rely on me to build their stuff and have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> uh, this graphics card is going to be horribly expensive. Um, the 4090 non-tie version is around $1,600. This card is going to, it's got to exceed two grand, I'm sure. Um, it's probably going to be 2,500 bucks is kind of where I'm placing it. Um, to leave even room above that, I bet for a $3,000 Titan, um, which is maybe something that's coming as a derivative of this card, but I'm not sure. What I find interesting about this is it's PCB or board layout is absolutely different than things we've seen in the past. And this really caught my attention. So, uh, I don't know if it shows it. Well, they don't have a picture on this side of the uh, 4090 or 4080, but basically those cards, uh, have a, uh, they're, they're three slot mostly. Um, and then they have, well, more than that, the partner cards, but they have a, um, actual board that, goes across the the top of the card and what happens is basically the fan that's mounted on the bottom blows directly into that card um, the back of the card these cards are actually not that long so the the back half of the card um, has kind of got free pass through four fans um, and thus it can blow air from the bottom of your case into the top of your case but it's only about half of the card so it's not a uh, or half of the uh, sink of the card really the like I was saying, the card itself is not that long. Um, traditionally, video cards are a point of impedance for air to get from the bottom of the top of your case. And uh, that causes interesting <laughs> uh, zones of air getting trapped. Um, people have rotated their cars, cards um, in cases before. Um, that's, not been, that's nothing new. Um, in order to not only present them visually, because... Some of the cards have some pretty cool like uh, fans and LEDs and stuff on them from that side, from the fan side, but also um, to allow air to basically get past. Um, a lot of these vertical mounts, though, they're really close to the um, side panel. In some cases, they're not very well designed and can cause problems that way. But that's nothing new. What is new about this is the fact that literally the board is going to be sideways. So it's going to be down the side of the motherboard here, it looks like. And these fans will blow straight through the heat sink. Um, this, in this picture, you can see this is where the GPU would mount actually to the cooler. This is like a, um, this area is probably where your vapor chamber is. That's kind of like a fluid filled zone that as it heats up, it turns into kind of a gas and it'll go into these, into pipes, get cooled off and come back in here. Um, but this is where all the componentry, these would be, um, on, I guess like your VRMs, um, memory and whatnot to cool it off. It's a very interesting design because no impedance, the air would just flow straight through this, um, kind of like a CPU heatsink. And I think it could be interesting. It could create a situation where this is really good for the GPU, um, maybe good for the cooling overall of your system possibly, especially if you have a case that intakes strictly from the bottom of the case um, and blows up. Um, it could lend to a true, um, 
um, what they call like uh, some companies have all sorts of weird marketing lingo around it, like a, a smokestack style cooling or something like that. Um, but wasn't really feasible because of the, you know, whacking GPU that would be in the middle of uh, your case blocking the, uh, the flow of air. With this design, it actually would be possible. And I kind of wonder um, how this works and how effective this would be. I'm really sort of excited about the prospect of that. It should be coming um, sometime this year. I I'm going to guess probably in time for the holidays um, would be my guess. And I do hope that these leaks are true um, and that they're actually doing this because I find it pretty interesting. The um, Again, the cost and wattage of this card is ridiculous. This is going to be, I mean, it's four slots. Um, this is the reference model. This is not, it's not the, um, not a partner design. This is a reference model. Um, it's, like I said, it's going to be over two grand. Um, there's just the way that NVIDIA is pricing things gotta be just gotta be, um, I would be shocked if this card came in at $2,000 with the 4090 non tie edition coming in at, at 1600. Um, it's going to, uh, rumor mill has it at board power around 600 Watts. Um, that is a lot. Um, and while this design could be pretty efficient, one thing I am a little bit concerned with is at that kind of wattage, um, you know, is it just going to, <laughs> is it going to make our CPU coolers beg for mercy? Um, uh, because it's just going to dump all of that heat. I mean, I would think the fans are going to be flowing straight through from bottom to top of the case. That just seems to make the most sense. Um, from a layout perspective, um, and from the, uh, render from the picture here. If we look, that's probably where a fan would be mounted somewhere over here, like uh, where this little plate is like so. Um, so I got to think, um, you know, it's not going to blow down. It's going to blow up. So air is going to go. And I'm not sure the orientation of this card exactly for another reason. I'll point out here in a second, but I got to think that air is going to go from bottom to top. If this were the top, let's say, and um, yeah, so it's gonna, it's gonna throw however much wattage, uh, of heat, you know, just all that heat is going to get dumped right in the top of your case. If you have a very well ventilated, um, case that has a lot of fans in the top or you're using like a 360 millimeter AIO, which I think a lot of these systems probably, if you have enough money to throw on a video card like that, you probably will be, um, using probably okay. Um, you're probably going to be fine. Um, honestly, it may improve. It'll definitely, uh, the GPU, um, temps, you know, this ought to help keep those in check from this monstrous GPU. Um, GPUs, you know, they warm up the whole system anyway. So again, I, I'm not so sure that this is going to be a problem, but it's something to kind of keep an eye on. Now, not a very well ventilated case. You throw this bad boy in there. Oh man. Um, I think it could um, it could put your CPU on the on the Barbie like uh, it could be kind of rough times, um, but I think it's a very interesting design. Um, what I was talking about as far as a case that intakes from the bottom and is supposed to ventilate through the top, um, I, I have a, a good example. I was actually looking at this case, so um, I am sort of a fan of some of the stuff we did back in the day. <laughs> And there was a Lee and Lee case called the A05. It was very popular because it was cost effective and it was made of aluminum. Um, and it was a it was a pretty cool little case. Um, it was longer than a lot of the cases because it actually mounted the power supply up front. And this case just reminds me a lot of it. This is called the John's Bow D41 mesh. Um, it's got mesh panels. Um, it can fit. Um, uh, actually, if you take the drive bays out, there are drive bays here. I wonder if I can show you. Yeah. Okay. So if you take these drive bays out, you can actually fit three 120s and a 120 in the front. Uh, that's a 120 millimeter fan for those unfamiliar. Um, this is where your power supply would go. And it can also do a 360 AIO in the top. I think this little case, because of the way it's designed, would work probably pretty well with a graphics card like this. The graphics card is going to be massive. 
Um, however, since this is an ATX form factor case, um, it has plenty of room in the bottom if you don't need the drive bays, which like, for example, I would not. Um, it would absolutely fit that card and there's plenty of um, momentum, you know, as far as air moving through the case. Um, now unimpeded because this is a flow through design. Um, it could be interesting. Um, I think that, um, you know, something like this would be intriguing to me um, to see what sort of temps and things you would get out of that. Um, but generally speaking, I actually like this case. I, I'm kind of thinking about getting one and maybe sort of uh, it would be like my first review. Um, just trying to get the channel kind of going here. Um, full transparency, full transparency, notwithstanding. Um, I like the screen. I think that would be fun to play with. Um, I like how it uh, is compact. And I plan on putting my PC on the desk. So one thing to notice is it's got the I.O. Um, on the front of the case. So anyway, we'll, we'll talk more about this later, this case. But for now, I just think that this is a very interesting design. Um, again, it's going to be massively large. Um, it's going to be heavy. Uh, I can't even imagine what the... So it's a tie model, um, which means that there will be likely partner cards of this. And I can't even fathom what the partner cards will do with this layout. Um, you know, will they will they make their normal boards? Um, will they try to copy this layout? Like, uh, it's... I'm not even sure what's going on. And I think that's why this card, even though... It seems to be along, right? Like we seem to have a full-fledged cooler and stuff here. If this is the actual design and not just a test of this design, it's going to be later this year before we see this for sure. Um, it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me if this is the end of 2023 um, before we um, see the big reviewers, your gamers nexuses, and um, Jay Z, Two Cents, and and those guys actually get their hands on this. I would I would suspect. Um, other questions about the, this raises, you know, how's this going to plug in the motherboard? I mean, is it literally the PCB comes down this way? Is there just going to be um, a plug <laughs> that sticks out from the side? Is it going to be like some sort of L here? Um, very strange. Like, I'm not sure how they're going to do that. Again, I think this is really intriguing. Um, and we're going to keep an eye on it. And I'm really excited to see, and I hope that... Um, you know, we get more info as time goes along, uh, maybe more spy shots to uh, to kind of look at and see how this lines up. Um, it'll be very interesting. So anyway, so there's that. I, I thought that was worth a, just a quick discussion dissemination because I'm not sure, for those who are enthusiasts about this sort of thing, I'm not sure if, uh, um, you know, if everybody was thinking that. But this, again, this this could be really interesting um, and we'll we'll check it out. Anyway, appreciate your time. Um, like and subscribe. There will be much more and more interactive stuff to come. Um, but for now, signing off.